Welcome to Pastor Chat. My name is Diana. This is Pastor Lynn. Today we're talking about the parenting series. Pastor Lynn, you just got done talking about how to win the heart of your child when they're kind of in that pre-teen stage. Give us right. a quick recap of what you were talking about. No, so part of this is there, there's a power. You know, I think sometimes we think as parents that we're supposed to just kind of give our kids a sense of right and wrong, a moral code in their lives. And yet there's going to be moments in the lives where there's enough peer pressure, things going on, that that's not going to be sufficient. And what's really going to become the reference point to them is what is my action gonna do the heart of the people that I care for and love? So if, if that can be parents that are that, you know, that anchor point for them, and, and you know, it's the kid who says, I can't do that because it would disappoint my dad so deeply, right? So now that moral code is now anchored in the heart of their father or the heart of their mother. And then eventually, which we'll talk about later, is giving that heart to God so that that also becomes that anchor point. It says, I can't do that because God would be so disappointed if I chose to do that. Could we get like real concrete for a second? Is there a way that you've kind of won the heart of your kids or grandkids? Yeah, so, you know, recently I had to do this whole parenting thing kind of second lap because we had our granddaughter Catalina living with us for a couple of years. And, you know, basically what we said in the whole winning the heart is that we're moving in kind of our response to what our kids do, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but now we're adding heart conversation to that moment. And so I can remember really clearly a moment when uh, Catalina had just really lied to us. We had kind of gone back over the conversation two, three times, and she lied and lied, and then we, we caught her in it, and there was surely a consequence. I think we grounded her for a couple of days. But I remember in the midst of that conversation, we said, hey, Catalina, you're, you know, you're not gonna be able to go out and play for a couple of days, I'm not gonna do it. But then we shifted that conversation to a heart conversation, and we said, hey, Catalina, uh, you need to know how sad that makes our hearts when you lie to us. Because our hope is, is that you would always tell us the truth. And when you don't, it, it just makes our hearts sad. And I watched her little eyes get big. And I realized in that moment, more effective than the fact that she wasn't going to go out play a couple days was the fact that we had tied our hearts into the conversation. And that had made a deeper impact on her. Thanks for sharing that with yeah. us. Um, what do you say to all of our families who are watching who maybe don't have a mom and a dad in the home? And you kind of talk about the role each parent has in winning the heart of their child. What would you say to those parents? Yeah, I, you know, part of the conversation that we had on Sunday was the fact that dads have this special place in winning their kids. It's just how God wired our families and wired our children. And dads have this incredibly significant role. And so I tried to encourage dads to really engage in winning the hearts of their children. But I, I get it. I, I grew up in a home. I, I didn't have a father. He had, my parents had divorced when I was nine. And so what I would really say, especially to single moms out there who are raising kids, they don't have that, look for those opportunities. And I mean, look everywhere. Look in a grocery store and when a dad treats a kid and say, hey, did you see that? That was a great dad. Or you can even use negative. Hey, that was a dad who wasn't necessarily being a great dad right then. But you, ha you give them those reference points. For me, the thing that was wonderful, I had an uncle. And I'd go spend summers with my uncle. And as I looked through my life, there were other men that got brought in my life. But I think as a single mom, you look for those opportunities. Even if it's a TV show. Hey, look how that dad treated their children. And, and you give them that reference so that they have this kind of surrogate father role to use reference from. That's a cool idea, almost like watching game film in yeah. sports. It's, hey, let's watch this show, let's see this interaction Absolutely. and coach your kids through Absolutely. that. Absolutely, and again, I think you can leverage both positive male roles and even negative and say, hey, you realize um, a good dad would never say that or treat their child that way, right? And you're, you're just using it as a reference point. It's game film, hey, there was a mistake or hey, that was something that was really, really good. That's great. Pastor Lynn, would you pray for all of our parents who are just working to win the heart of their Absolutely. kids? Absolutely. Hey, dear Assembly Father, we just come before you. And God, this for many of us, this is a brand new idea. It's a brand new concept of actually reaching for and trying to win the hearts of our children uh, to ourselves. God, would you just guide us as we do this? Help us to have really, really powerful conversations with our kids both in the times when our kids have done something wrong and we're talking about how our hearts have been hurt, but God, maybe even more so in the moments when our kids have done something right that we don't miss it 
and don't ignore it, but instead lean in to say, wow, I just want you to know I saw that and I'm so thrilled and just so thankful for how you behaved and how you acted in that moment. And that God, through those conversations about our hearts, that our children would actually give us their hearts. And God, we pray this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching us. We'll see you next time.